thank you very much um, for that. Um, uh, let me just say, first of all, uh, to those of you in Europe, uh, good morning. To those of you in India, good afternoon. To those of you in China, good evening. And wherever you are, welcome to this, um, this session, this conference of IOTSF. Uh, I'm talking to you from uh, London, but as, as John has just said, uh, this is not an organization which is in any way UK centric. It's an organization which is um, global and where we are very, very interested in trying to make sure that uh, we reach out to as wide a range of participants from all over the world that we can. Uh, and as I will say in more detail in a minute, we very strongly encourage you all to participate in our work in a variety of different ways. I'm going to talk uh, a little bit about where IOTSF is at at the moment. And, and I've, I've entitled it, the, the best is still to come. Some of you may remember a popular song that had that refrain, but it's a well-known saying uh, and, and it signifies uh, the main message which I would like to deliver, which is, you know, IOTSF has done some fantastic stuff so far, but the challenge of IoT security remains. There is more work to be done, and IOTSF is very well placed to help lead and shape that work all over the world. Um, I want uh, uh, to say a little bit, first of all, about where we have got to um, in, in um, the, the development of IOTSF so far. Uh, you know, it is true to say, as John did, that um, we have been around now for six years, that um, we have achieved an enormous amount. That document that we called the compliance framework originally and is now called the assurance framework has been a really seminal product, which has helped form, consolidate and crystallize thinking around IOTSF security in various parts of the world. And we are quoted in, in, in all sorts of government and, and, and other documents. So that is, I think, a great tribute to us and, and to where, where we started. Sometimes there's a, there's a word activist, which is very popular now. And sometimes I think we are the IOTSF activists and um, that is the role we see for ourselves. But we don't, if you like, confine ourselves simply to joining demonstrations and, and waving placards. We want to make sure that our activism is rooted in really solid, impartial, objective expertise. And it's that bringing together of experts, whether they are private experts or representatives of companies, which has really, really helped to give us the prestige and standing that we have earned uh, in, in the debate. Um, John has already told you about the change of name from compliance to assurance framework. And I, you know, I was thinking as we had all these debates, there's an old saying, what's in a name? And actually there's quite a lot in a name. Um, we, can, we can quote various things from literature about names. You know, there's that famous line in Shakespeare, uh, Romeo and Juliet, you know, Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou Romeo? Why are you called Romeo? Why is it that your name is so important? Because in the play, the name means that he belongs to the family, which is historically very hostile to the family that Juliet is from, which will mean that their love is doomed to failure and to tragedy. So names are hugely important. Uh, and names not only reflect the world we see, but they also help to create a bit the world we see. And um, the change of the name from compliance to assurance is a really significant shift. It's a shift around the, the recognition that IoT, SF, IoT security is a process. It's a process rather than a product. It's a process of building trust building awareness, building the right procedures in place, making sure those procedures evolve and evolve successfully um, in a way which uh, helps uh, companies to change with the times and to ensure 
that they do have the most relevant form of security for whatever challenge is thrown at them. The assurance framework remains <clears throat> a hugely successful piece of literature on the subject. It's downloaded still six years after we created it, five years after we created it, more than a hundred times a month. But it's not the only product we have. Bolstering that product are the best practice guides, which also have an incredibly important role to play in helping to uh, fill out, to explain, to develop the concepts of the assurance framework as they apply to specific challenges, specific problems, specific, specific sectors, if you like. So that we have these products which are <clears throat> immensely important and are reaching a wider and wider audience every month. Every month, there are more downloads, more people turning to our products for guidance and advice. And, and the result of all of this is that it, in, it, to some extent, things are going our way. You know, the, the debate on IoT security has changed hugely in the six years since our foundation. We are now looking at uh, IoT regulation of some sort being contemplated by the regulatory authorities in a number of jurisdictions right across the world. Um, and, if, and if I may say so, important jurisdictions at that, jurisdictions who hope that if they put regulation in place, that will somehow help shape the world's regulation. That's certainly the ambition of the European Union. And I suspect that in Washington DC, there is also a feeling that, that what they do there can also help set the mood. But actually other countries have, have done the same. Uh, legislation in Australia and Singapore has also been designed to, to help others, to give others a model to practice how legislation might be introduced in a way which doesn't unduly burden industry. And then of course, you've got not just the governments, but, but specialist bodies on whom the governments rely, helping to, to develop ideas and set the agenda. Uh, and they are incredibly important in making sure that the government policy is linked to good expert advice. So, so the slide we're now looking at, IOTSF's place in the value chain, these two comments are put in quotation marks, but they're quotations only from me. Um, at the bottom of the slide, there is a link to the uh, mission statement, the official mission statement of the IOTSF. But rather than read a sort of statement that was the product of, of committee drafting, and there's nothing wrong with that. I thought I would have a go at just trying to summarize what it is that constitutes the IOTSF's unique selling point. And, and I think first, it's this free to use, impartial, comprehensive assurance framework. And, and, and what does that, how does that help companies? It helps them get ready by designing security into their products so that they're ready for the next wave of regulation that's coming. Uh, and, and dare I say, even if it's not regulation, it will be increasing demand from their customers for secure and trustworthy products. And the second thing I think, which gives IOTSF its unique place is that it is a forum for shaping the regulatory landscape. Uh, it is a forum where the technology and the policy, and if you like, the politics and the business imperatives all come together so that we can play a part in making sure that the regulatory outcomes are sensible and help build, drive, create, enlarge the market for IoT, rather than we enter a world where people mistrust IoT because they don't believe that it is secure enough. Now, nothing stands still uh, for long. And although we've reached over the last few years, a few important milestones in the history of IoT security, um, the debate continues to evolve. I mean, even if you look at the debate over what are the key IoT security criteria, um, which products should um, res respect, uh, you know, there's, there's a discussion about that. I mean, um, uh, in the UK and its proposal for 
upcoming legislation. There will be three, the three basic ones, no default passwords, vulnerability disclosure system and information about how long over the air upgrades are available. But um, there's a group that looks at cyber tech that's formed around Microsoft in the United States. Uh, and they would quite like to add a couple more on um, essentially on data protection issues. And of course, the, 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 I think the, the, um, the most elaborate recent collection of standards drawn up by Etsy in, uh, in the European Union has 13. So I think the debate on which are the basic standards is not going to stand still. It is going to evolve um, continually. And um, as it does so, I think we need to make sure that industry is ready for whatever the regulatory environment throws at them. One of these new ideas is labeling. Uh, and, and labeling is a, a slightly um, controversial issue in some ways in that people have looked at labeling. The UK government looked at it a few years ago. IOTSF looked at it a few years ago. And, and there were misgivings about labeling. I mean, some of the misgivings come uh, understandably from companies whose responsibility it would be to put labels uh, on products. But some of the misgivings are, I feel like more general than that. Some of the misgivings are about, you know, does a label simply mean that you've frozen security at a moment in time? Uh, and that the minute a product leaves the, leaves the factory with a label on, uh, you know, there will be security vulnerabilities in it that the label doesn't somehow um, testify to. But labelling, on the other hand, is also seen as a really important driver of consumer confidence. And uh, you can see recently in the United States, uh, the White House has got very interested in labelling and has asked NIST to prepare um, uh, a, a report, a study, a scheme on how labeling might be introduced for IoT products. You can see that um, labeling is something which uh, policymakers think of as a guarantee, if you like, to consumers that their product is indeed uh, secure and meets certain um, basic standards. And therefore, what we are trying to do at IoTSF is to consider our position on labeling again, and to make sure that we um, make the assurance framework uh, address the possibility of labeling. Uh, not so much the, the, the rights of, or wrongs of labeling, but more a question of how, how, if you're required to put a label, how do you do that sensibly? How do you make sure that that label reflects, if you like, a chain of assurances that you have as, uh, as a gadget manufacturer, that it reflects a chain of assurances that give you the confidence to stick that security label on it. So we will be looking at labeling uh, and at how we do, uh, how we might address that. But there is another issue which is coming up the agenda, which is what happens beyond consumer uh, IoT security? And there is already talk of uh, the security bait moving into enterprise. Now, this is a big issue. And um, again, at, at the IOTSF in recent months, we've been looking at how we can ourselves begin to address some of the IoT enterprise issues. And it, the, the issues will be different. Um, you know, I mean, to put it to put it bluntly, you know, enterprises perhaps are less interested in, in whether a product has a label on it but they're much more interested in things like whether their system is, is designed properly, whether it is installed properly, whether it's monitored properly, and whether it's configured properly. And, 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 and enterprises will be looking at this as a system-wide issue. Uh, and I think where the, the, the area where IOTSF can play an important role is by looking at this, if you like, integrated management system for enterprises handling a variety of connected devices, IoT uh, devices throughout their business. And we will be looking at how, how the assurance framework can be uh, developed in order to offer sensible advice 
to those people sitting in the hot seat in enterprises trying to deal with the move towards um, pressure for more secure uh, enterprise IoT. And that's two areas, labeling and enterprise IoT security, which we'll be looking at as we move forward. And our hope is to involve our members, but also others uh, who are not all yet necessarily members, but others who would have an interest in this debate, particularly the enterprise debate, in, in helping to shape our work going forward so that we can do for enterprise roughly what we did for consumer, which is to make sure that we are able to develop an objective and impartial series of recommendations for how you manage the enterprise security issues and that those recommendations will help inform the way in which um, the debate unfolds across all jurisdictions in the, in the years ahead. And while doing these two new things, we will obviously maintain the principles and the character of our assurance framework. It has to be um, the product of cooperative uh, expertise and advice, and it has to remain simple and practical and pragmatic. And if you like, it's the sort of um, the text that lies behind what, what I think will be the emergence of other regulatory systems. So we may not be in a position to be able to offer uh, a company a, 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 a stamp or a seal of a, approval, but we will be able to say, if you follow our recommendations and advice, you will find that your products meet the standards wherever you are in the world and whichever market you're trying to sell into. And that is, that is our ambition. Um, uh, and that is what we have done so far and um, why we have tried to make the assurance framework free to access so that um, anyone anywhere in the world can access our best practice advice. So that's what I mean by the best is still to come. We, we've come a long way. There have been some very important steps taken over the last few years, but challenges remain. We can see the debate moving into new areas. We are ready for it, and we will make sure that our assurance framework evolves to address those things. And in doing so, as John said, <coughs> we will be welcoming the establishment of new branches, chapters of IOTSF right across the world. I mean, John explained that we're announcing the first one goes live today in, in Bucharest, and it goes live in Bucharest because Bucharest it is, is an important location in that the European Union is citing some of its cybersecurity uh, agencies in, in, in Bucharest. And, and it's, it's likely to play a key part in, in how the European Union's policy evolves. But we also plan to take IOTSF into branches and chapters in major markets, whether in India or China or, or in the United States or wherever. Wherever there is a cluster of tech companies looking at IoT, there ought to be a chapter of IoTSF helping them uh, get ready for the future. Thank you very much. I'm sorry the slides seemed a bit out of kilter, um, but I hope you were able to follow them. Um, I've tried to explain my vision as, as simply as possible. Um, and if there are any questions, I would be happy to take them.